Hello everyone, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. The place where I, Manpreet, share my journey of healing intergenerational family trauma to help you to understand your story. I share a bunch of tools and tips that will transform your mental health and allow you to find your own heart's happiness. So exciting, right? Each episode will cover one of three areas. One, raising awareness of what this trauma actually is and how it hides in our lives. Two, tools, tips, support, lots of different things that I've used to get better and heal from this trauma. And three, I'll be connecting you with so many specialists and therapists and coaches as guests on my show. So we are going to transform your mental health and empower you to take your healing by the hands and move forward. Hello, my loves. Welcome back for another episode of Heart Happiness. Now, I had an idea for this podcast and I completely, like five minutes before I was about to record it, changed my mind because I've heard of a theme that's been coming up a lot um, recently and that is bullying, bullying of your younger self. So whether that was with a parent or it was with a relative or it was at school, the impact that can have on us and how we can heal from it. So we are connecting with your inner child, whether it is the seven-year-old version, the five-year-old version, uh, or it's the t- you know ten-year-old, fifteen-year-old you that has been hurt in this way. I am somebody that has been bullied by a number of people in my life, and it's something that's come up for me more recently and how I'm navigating that and how I'm healing from that. So I thought I'll share some of that with you, like as I always do, like sharing my stories of healing and change and how you can overcome these things and what what bullying did to me and how that impacted my life as well. So the definition of bullying is when people deliberately use words or actions repeatedly against an individual or a group to cause physical, social, and psychological harm. They usually want to make the person feel less or powerless or helpless. And I believe that a lot of people are the bully because they've been bullied by someone themselves. So there's trauma at the root of the bullying. So whether they received bullying from a parent or a sibling, or an uncle or an auntie, and it made them feel powerless or helpless, and they didn't know how to soothe that. So what they would do would just to repeat the behaviors that they've seen. Now I've shared, I know I did a a podcast this month earlier about the healing of the critical parent, and this probably has a similar theme, but bullying is really nasty, and it's really lashes out, and it makes you feel incredibly unsafe, and it's really unjust and you don't know why these people are talking to you like this and putting you down like this and saying these things. And it can feel really, really scary. So when I got bullied by my dad when I was little, who would, you know, all of a sudden get really dark and be like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're this, you know, insulting comments. It's very bullying, you know, um, physical expression making you feel unsafe like making them feel like that they have power over you is really really scary and unsafe so these are the feelings that you may have felt as a small child by one of your parents i know i certainly did but for me the bullying wasn't just my parent it wasn't just my dad and my dad wasn't consistently a bully he just was sometimes sometimes it might have been when he was drunk sometimes it might have been when he had a bad sleep But I didn't realise that he was in his own child consciousness. And we're going to be talking about the difference between child consciousness and adult consciousness in a moment. But I just wanted to go through the different types of bullies I've experienced in my life. And when it was, especially those younger years, so zero to seven when my brain was developing, that is something that's really stayed with me that I get very anxious about people sometimes because I have been bullied. And it really, really impacted my feelings of self-worth. And because that's the whole point of the bullying is to make you feel worse so they feel better about themselves. It could be narcissistic, but sometimes it can just be like kids in a playground and them copying what they've seen growing up. So you may have had this in the home with a parent, but it may have even been at school 
And I want you to just think about your life from, you know, even zero to now. And where have you felt unsafe by somebody's actions where they have just insulted you and said something that has come out of nowhere and you don't even understand why. And they're even maybe sometimes blaming it on you or gaslighting you, like just have a think. So I have had, like with my dad for sure, and I also had with relatives as well. So uncles and aunties, I'm not going to say which ones, but I had people in my family that were bullying towards me and they would also comment on things like my body and um, my personality and everything like from such a young age. And this is a theme that I've seen even with my clients some of them have been incredibly bullied by not just their parent, but by other people in the family as well. So that could be relatives like uncles and aunties. Like for me in the South Asian culture, we used to hang out with our family quite a lot. So uncles and aunties did actually have quite an impact on my development because I saw them that often, like maybe every weekend or like at least once a month, it was regular. So hearing those things and they're not being protected by mum or dad was horrible like nobody would say anything to these people for talking to me like that they didn't put boundaries in with them or say it's not okay for me, for you to speak to my child like that none of that they just allowed it to happen they weren't even around when you know they knew this person was a bit loose with their words but you know they would allow her to be around me with that self-deprecation that comparison of other children and it was a consistent theme throughout my childhood and made me feel incredibly small and unsafe and like I was less worthy because literally exactly those words would come out of these adults mouths so you don't as a child think that they're saying these things because they are um you know just like traumatized <laughs> you think that they're speaking truth right and I remember being compared to my cousins like literally st stood um side to side and being compared like that was just so cruel and I had no idea that these people were traumatized so I experienced this bullying within the family network and then you know that means that other relatives like the children of these uncles and aunties some of them picked up the bullying techniques as well. So I became a target for some of those. And where I wasn't a, someone that could protect myself or voice my opinion, or I would just shut down and freeze and I wouldn't say anything. And I would try to protect myself by being what they wanted me to be. So not getting their attention, not being too amazing because you know they would get upset or disappointed or angry or whatever. Like I wouldn't uh, like allow any of that to happen. I would try so hard not to irritate these people in my family so they wouldn't lash out on me, but sometimes they wouldn't and sometimes they would and sometimes they'd be lovely to me and sometimes they wouldn't be lovely to me. And it was this really scary, unshaky kind of feeling within. And I also got bullied at school as well. So that was probably when I was about six I got bullied at school for being like the, the one of the few brown girls and that was again really scary being taunted saying you're not this or you're not that and again my parents didn't do anything to protect me I didn't say anything to them they didn't notice that I was being impacted at school I didn't feel safe enough to talk to them about it so the bullying kind of just happened at school when I was really, really young. And this made me really shy and very nervous around people. I was very, very quiet as a child because, you know, I just didn't trust people, to be honest. I'd lost my grandma when I was really, really young and she was a big source of protection. My parents were very distracted by their own relationship with the problems they were having with my granddad who was alive for like 11 years of my life. And I didn't feel protected. I didn't feel safe from these people and yeah it just felt really scary like it just felt like I was always on high alert just so terrified that somebody was gonna say something nasty to me and I would just freeze I would never say anything I would just freeze I wouldn't stick up for myself 
and then I would loathe on myself. I would blame myself. And it's like I became to myself my own inner bully because I heard it so much. So I was like, God, you're so stupid. If you weren't stupid, they wouldn't say these things. Like that started to become my survival technique is pleasing them, you know, giving away my power, not saying anything, freezing, being the walkover, being a punch bag, being someone that allows people to work out whatever their bad day is on, no boundaries because I would freeze. Nobody had showed me how to deal with a bully. Nobody had showed me what I say, how I behave, how I have boundaries. My parents weren't showing me this. My my, my mum was being bullied by various relatives in the family. Doesn't say anything, allows it to happen. My dad was even in some ways bullied in aspects by his dad, by other relatives, and he would not say anything and just get angry and get drunk and do all of these things. And it was, and that's how the pattern of the bullying repeats. Because nobody is saying to the bully, you know, nobody was walking away from these relationships and saying, no, I'm not having that. That doesn't work for me. Thank you very much. People were just staying in them because we're family and we're related. And that's like the culture of the world that I come from. And it might be different from you. Like, you know, I had a client recently saying, you know, uh, the whole family says she's really mean because she is trying to create something different from her for her children. So she is trying to put in boundaries and she's trying to want more for her children. But her family, the place, her family of origin, the place that she's come from, do not understand why she's trying to be different, why she's trying to better her life. And that's why like being on the healing journey sometimes can be like a little bit lonely because you can feel that something or somebody's behavior doesn't feel safe to you, that you feel like bullied by it, but it's breaking those family norms or it's fake breaking those traditions. I also know some people that basically had a child that was bullying other children and then did not parent them to stop that. They didn't do anything about it. They allowed it to continue. So that person, became a bully in their adult life as well so this is the problem when we don't know how to set boundaries we don't know how to be healthy we just repeat this stuff unconsciously and for those of you like me that have been bullied that have been spoken to badly and then have taken that all on as your own fault and tried to like do things to feel safe so you've tried to please others or you've tried to you know, be really good or you've tried to not like draw attention to yourself. That was a big thing. I didn't want to draw attention to myself because I would upset and enrage this jealousy within them. And it just meant that I was playing my life so small, but also that I was, as part of my hypervigilance of trying to keep myself safe, I was constantly looking for the bullying, you know. And even when I started my business, I started my Instagram page, that was the first thing I did a few years ago, I felt really scared to be seen. I felt scared to share my story. I felt scared to show my face. I felt scared to show my body because I have been attacked for that for so many years of my life by various people within family and outside of family. So it just felt really, really scary. And that held me back for a long time. You know, these bullies in my life told me that I wasn't worthy of love. They've told me that I wasn't worthy of being a mother, that I am, it's not possible for me to get a man. And, you know, I used to really listen to them as well and really believe what they were saying to me and let allow them to diminish my self-worth and my self-esteem because I didn't have the tools or understanding to know that that was happening to me. So this is part of the reason why I've created this podcast, guys, is I wanna validate the part of you that got bullied, okay? Whether they got bullied by a parent, an uncle, an auntie, a cousin, a sibling, a teacher, a person at school, I don't care. If that person was cruel to you 
and it shocked you. It pushed you into a freeze response that you were just getting about your day, playing nicely, and then all of a sudden they say something really nasty and really cruel and it really stings you and it really burns you and you're like... (gasps) It takes the air out of you. You freeze in the moment and you're just like, oh my God, why is this person saying this to me? And then you go into this feeling like a victim, but you're not being protected. You're not being looked after. You're not being shown how you deal with bullies, which is, by the way, putting in boundaries, stepping away from them, expressing your truth if you want to. If you don't feel safe to, that's also fine. Um, All of these things, that is the power that we take back by learning how to change the patterns and dynamics in these fa- these relationships. And you might find, which like I did, that you will find other relationships, whether it be with friendships and men as you get older and women as you get older, that that is happening because of this dynamic of the bullying. And it's not okay, okay? It's not okay. You, if you resonate with my story and you've been listening to my podcast, you may be the person that has felt powerless to the bullies in your life, felt like you had no choice, that felt like that you had to be the doormat and lie down and take it and not stand up for yourself. You're not a fighter, you're a freezer, you're a pleaser, you're a fauna, which makes you a massive big target for abuse because you don't know how to set the boundaries. And when you try to do anything like that, set a boundary, step away from a relationship, um you get really triggered, it feels really unsafe. And the other person may react to that as well, which feels really, really scary. So you just don't do it. And I want you to think about that little girl or little boy that lives inside of you, the one that was wounded, that has been bullied time and time and time again. And now you're the adult. You get to be that inner child's parent. You get to say, no, actually, you don't get to treat me like that anymore. I'm not okay with that. That's not right for me. And you get to advocate and be strong and be the parent that you needed. Even if that upsets whatever, other relatives, family members, whoever, you know, siblings, your partner, whatever. You know, let's be really clear. It's not okay to take out your trauma on other people. We want people to go and get help and get support. If we are being the doormat for them to work out their trauma on, then they don't ever have to change. They don't ever have to work on it. And they have the choice to change and work on themselves if they want to. But when we are taking it and we are being the doormat, we're being the place where they discharge their trauma, they don't ever have to change. And that's the thing that's happened with me and my bullies, right? When my dad was alive, I I did used to kick off with him, to be fair, and I did used to tell him what I think um, as I got older. And certainly if he was here now, it would be really hard for me, but I would tell him that it's not okay for you to bully your child. Just because you got bullied as a child by your dad, it's not okay for you to treat me like that. And if you want a relationship with me, these are the rules, these are the boundaries, and this this is how we will be in part of that relationship. Now, I don't know what my dad would have been like now. It's been 16 years. Who he would be at like 65, got no idea. I mean, I'd love to think that he would have got some help and sorted himself out, but let's just say he was the same guy he'd always been, the bully. He would kick off and not be very happy about that. He would throw his toys out of the pram. But then I have to be strong and focus on the boundaries with him and choose myself over a relationship that is even your parent because it is re-traumatizing, it really is, and the safety within the body and the fear, and you might need to step away from relationships while you heal from that bullying, because if you have some space away from it, it may not trigger your nervous system in the same way that it does when you're around them all of the time. Now, we have different types of consciousness, okay? As a child, the consciousness is we're very emotional, we might avoid responsibility, We find it difficult to express our needs and we run from our intense feelings and expressions. So you know what a child's like, right? But what the problem is that adults are walking around and they're still in their child consciousness. They're not taking responsibility for their action. They are reacting. They are being emotional in their thinking. They are like grown up kids, basically, 
um, running from their intense feelings and not knowing how to deal with it, not able to, to emotionally regulate. So they get stuck in it and then they have like an emotional outburst. Like now I see the bullying with like my dad when he would say those harsh co- comments. He is dysregulated and he is having a childish emotional outburst and he is being cruel like i'm sure you guys have had a child go i don't love you i don't love you i don't like you my friends tell me that their kids say stuff like that i don't like you i don't like you you're a horrible person i love daddy more or whatever do you see what i'm saying like they're like a little bully (laughs) but they're a child they literally don't know any better but adults they can still be trapped in their child consciousness because the trauma the complex trauma the ptsd that they've experienced has stopped their development, right? And whereas the adult consciousness, when we are healthy, it is logical thinking. It is willing to take responsibility when we have done something. We take responsibility for our actions. We apologize. We work on communicating and repairing our relationships. We can attend to our own needs and we don't need somebody else to do it for them. And if we do need help from somebody or support or we want to lean on someone because we do as humans need co-regulation we know how to communicate that in a loving supportive way if we feel like we're struggling with something we will take responsibility by getting the support that we need and we are able to be fully present with ourselves and our range of emotions and our range of emotional experiences. So that is the difference between the adult consciousness and the child consciousness. The problem is so many of us have been raised by parents trapped in their child consciousness. And let's not just say it's our parents, it's us too. I spent most of my life in my child consciousness. So I was like this little girl trying to survive her bullies as a 35 year old woman, allowing a man to bully me in a relationship or a non-existent relationship allowing you know I've even allowed my brother whom I love more than like anything to bully me because I didn't have the tools to be able to communicate with him to put in my boundaries so all I would do was he would be nasty I would get triggered and I would shut down and I wouldn't speak to him because that's the only thing I knew how to do because my mum had done that I didn't ever have the words because I would get so scared by him shouting or him being angry because of my experiences like with my dad. And by the way, this is not my brother. He is not this person, but this is just who he became at times because he was trapped in his child consciousness. And my child consciousness is a bit opposite to that and shuts down, goes silent, freezes, doesn't say anything. And neither of us are sorting out the relationship like that. But it's only through us being on our healing journeys that we can have a better relationship than we did before. And also having space and distance has really helped us. Like we actually, for the first time ever, we actually have conversations on the telephone. Um, I have not done that with him (laughs) ever. But our relationship is really changing as he's stepping more and more into his adult. And so am I. It's not perfect at all. I don't want to pretend like it is, but it's definitely better because of doing some things that he hasn't liked me doing at times which is like I love you but you can't stay at my house (laughs) like he got really upset with me when I said that but that was because I was prioritizing my own mental well-being and you know putting in some boundaries in space in the space and he's also wanted me to do things that I didn't agree with and I've said no and he found that really really difficult again because he was trapped in that child consciousness um but he's very different now because he's been you know he's been in therapy he's been working on himself he's been reading he's been understanding his inner child what's happened to him his story and he's able to have a healthier relationship with me because of it and I wasn't you know like faultless in this either like I would shut down or sometimes you know I may have been able to access my inner bully maybe and not been very nice to him I just feel like it was different to the way that he would do it to me but um you know it's just really interesting when you think about the people in your lives that are bullies and there's been times when I have tried to communicate with my bully that this isn't okay and they have not liked it and they have not taken responsibility and they have continued the bullying and they have done gaslighting and they have done um, not taking accountability and they have 
done these things that have made me feel very unsafe and that is when I've chosen to step away from the relationship entirely to prioritize my own well-being so always be connected to yourself to your physical your mental your emotional your spiritual well-being if a relationship isn't respecting those boundaries isn't willing to do the repair work isn't willing to step in and learn about their own adult consciousness can you reduce how much time you spend with these people because the impact of it like when I used to be around my bullies because I felt like I had to it would take me weeks sometimes to get over it I would come home and have a drink and drink alcohol to escape the wounding of the way that I'd been spoken about because I couldn't I still struggle if somebody says those words to me I will freeze a little bit in panic I'm not a retaliator I find that really really hard I just go into that child that I once was I'm not like a fighter in that way and then they'll walk over me and I'll I'll feel really like annoyed with myself that I didn't say anything and then maybe sometimes I'll get the courage to say something and um it even though it feels really scary but it doesn't work because that person isn't willing to do that work with me and I've had to just accept that I would need to let some people go if they don't understand and if they are not going to understand that this isn't okay like we should both be taking accountability for this relationship and that's been really hard for me to do that because not everybody has understood not everybody has respected my you know opinion in that degree of like stepping away from relationships that are not good for me but again I just always think about the little girl that lives inside of me the one that's been like bullied her entire life you know the one that was told that she wasn't worthy of all of these things but you know what guys I got them and I got them because I learned to love and care for that little girl I learned to advocate her I learned how to step into that adult consciousness I learned how to show myself love and kindness and it is still a daily practice because I can turn into my own inner bully with how I speak to myself, the way that I could hurt my body through food or alcohol or any of these kind of things, how I can turn into the bully that I have been so afraid of in my life. I think that was a realisation that I had not too long ago. You are being the bully to yourself. There's somebody else at your table. You know, I've talked about, you know, I've got like a controlling parent. I've got like this inner rebel, but I've also got this bully who is nasty to myself and who is like you don't deserve to have a baby you don't deserve to have a healthy body you can't do this you know just being really nasty to me and causing myself to freeze and causing myself to harm myself and that's hard because we end up repeating some of the abuse that's happened to us to ourselves I've seen that with so many of my clients I'm like they're not here your bullies aren't here but you're doing it to yourself. You're doing that to yourself on a daily basis. You're telling yourself you can't do this. You're telling yourself you're not nothing. Nobody else is saying that to you. And that's kind of hard to face, <laughs> Like to be honest. When I realized that, I was like, oh, that's not nice. And I've been working on myself for a long, long time. But it's just this next chapter that I'm going into with motherhood. It's really making me assess some of these deeper wounds around the bully. And the impact the bullies had not on my, just my inner child, my inner teen, the 20 year old me, the 30 year old me, and now the 40 year old, 41 year old me, and how that impacts me now. And it doesn't feel safe still to this day to be in the limelight, to get attention. Because what if my bullies get upset with me? What if they lash out? What if I attract new bullies and negative attention? You know, how will I cope with that? So that's kind of like unconsciously wounds that are going underneath the surface. So I keep myself small to not generate attention, to not generate those nasty comments, those little jabs. You know, they feel so scary. So we play small. We play life tiny. We stick ourselves in the little box they gave us because we're trying to keep ourselves safe. We're trying to protect ourselves. It's a protective part of us. Even my inner bully is trying to help me. She's trying to keep me in line. 
so I don't make other people jealous or annoyed or nasty but other people's behavior is their responsibility you trying to control them not bullying you or not being nasty by paying small in any kind of way means that you don't get the life that you want and it is scary to stand up to those people you know you don't have to do it in a big way and you can do it subtly if that's what it works for you or you can do it in little baby steps if you so wish but it's about feeling safe within the body as well so something that I do is when I am stepping into that energy of standing up for my bullies or I feel like I'm getting attacked by a bully I will remind myself that I am safe and I shared with my membership this week that this wonderful quote that I saw that the nervous system needs to not be told it's safe to be shown it's safe so I got triggered by a bully and I went into my garden afterwards I could feel the heart rate changing the wanting to like go eat loads of crap because I felt scared and I went into the garden and I took a moment and I took a moment and looked around my garden looked around my house looked around my life right now in 2023 and I was like a bully can't do anything to me in here unless I let them And that sort of fear and that shame, it passed and I didn't let it ruin my day. Every now and again, I get a little bit angry about it, but I would just like go punch a bag or like have a little scream, like how dare they, how dare they? But then it passed, you know? So that's the way we get our power back from the bullies is by being that adult consciousness like being in that energy of taking care of ourselves taking care of our emotional needs letting us know we're safe letting the little child within you know that they're okay that if somebody wants to be bullying you and nasty and whatever that is about them that is their problem their thing that's got nothing to do with you their opinion of you is none of your business I love that statement none of your business it isn't what matters is how you are talking to yourself. What matters is what what you are doing to you. So if you are bullying yourself in your mind, if you are overthinking about what they are or are not going to do and be all hypervigilant about it, then that means you're stuck in the energy of them having power over you. But if you focus on f- feeling safe within taking that time to feel safe within, then they don't have that power over you. And the only reason that they're doing it in the first place is because of their own trauma and their own pain. But it doesn't mean it doesn't make it any less scary or like unkind or not nice for you to to deal with. So I have a course called Take Back Your Power, which is my signature course, which is kicking off in July. So very, very soon. I would love for you to come to this if this is your story. If you are somebody that has been bullied and you are ready to take back your power. And we go through like what happened to you from zero to seven as a teenager in your uh, parent relationships, in your other relationships. And we work out a plan of healing for you so that you can start to recover from this abuse because that's what it is. It is abuse. And it might be like aggressive, it could be like physically violent, it could be the threat of violence, it could be someone's physical body language, it could be gaslighting, denying your reality. All of it is abuse. And trying to get that person to realize that you're not bad or stop them from doing it isn't going to work. But working on your meaning that you give to their behavior is what is going to work. So when I'm in that in the garden and I'm triggered and I'm like consumed in the bully I'm like you know what I'm actually okay and this only affects my life if I let it affect my life and I choose not to let it affect my life and I'm safe in this moment and I'm okay and for some people that you know has meant walking ways for some people that's meant boundaries for some people that's meant less time you know it's different for every single bully for some people, I've been able to repair that relationship. Together, we have like managed to repair it. So there's so many different options, but it all starts with healing you. So come and join us for Take Back Your Power. The link is in the episode notes. You can message me on Instagram, hearts underscore underscore happiness, or you can email me at manpri at heartshappiness.co.uk if you want to join the 3rd of July cohort. 
But if you're listening to this later, don't worry. I'll have a version of that course. So message me anyway and I'll tell you what I've got going on now. Because guys, this is how we create our worlds, our families, our lives in adult consciousness. I want to raise my family being an adult. I also, one of the big reasons why I've taken such a stand with the bullies in my life is because I was bullied so much as a child that I don't want my children to think that's normal because I grew up thinking it was normal. I thought it was okay for people in your family to bully you. I thought that was absolutely okay. In fact, I thought that was incredibly normal. And I thought if they were bullying you, it was something to do with you. It wasn't to do with them and their pain. And I do not want my children to witness that and think that's normal. So that is why I'm really firm on the whole bullying thing because the damage that it's created has meant that I have let other people bully me, bully at work, bully in friendship, bully in romantic relationships, everywhere. Because I thought that it was okay, that it's okay for people to treat me like that because the people that I loved most in the world treated me like that. And it's not okay and it's not normal. And it's a trauma response, but it's not a very nice one because it means that we continue to spread the trauma to other people who will then have the choice to heal and step into their adult consciousness or stay trapped in their child consciousness. So you have that choice. And if you need support, and some people are like, I don't even know what's happened to me. I didn't even know this was bullying. I didn't even know this was trauma. That this course can really, really help you to do that. There are payment plans available. All of the information is in the link. So I'd love to see you there. That's it from me this week, guys. Speak to you very, very soon.